Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. This is a mono battle on Shipwreck. It is blind random, and let's go ahead and introduce these teams. Starting for the blue team, the blue Protoss player, Herp Derp, in the top left corner. His teammate, the other blue Protoss player, Brotoss, appropriately named. A blue Zerg player named Zelton from ECN. And finally, rounding it off another Protoss player, it is Reveran from Togosu. Or Togosu, because it's only a single O on the two. Hmm. Togosu it is. And in the bottom right side of the map, the red Terran player, it is Kanjiro. Which, kind of a fun name. I don't know what it means unless it's like Khan from Wrath of Khan in Star Trek. We also have a red Protoss player, Sergeant, a red Terran player, Stormbringer, and a red Zerg player, Niviak. Okay, so we do have Zergs on each team. We have Terrans on each team. No, I'm a liar. We have Protoss on each team and one Terran player. Oh wait, are there two? There are two, two Terran players? Two Terran players on team red. Okie doke. Okie doke here. So again, I'm not entirely sure what these players are. It's blind random, which means you are given a unit you can repick once if you want and can be given another random thing, but you don't know what it's going to be. It makes it very difficult to get good compositions here. But man, Team Red is talking up a storm right now. We'll see how they manage to do. They're covering up my mini-map. Didn't this used to be out here for chat? Why is it covering up my mini-map? This is loading from an older version of the game, just a little bit older. So maybe that's what's going on here. Again, my observer interface sometimes needs updating, depending on what changes in these different patches. All right, Zeltron, we're going to see what you're doing. We're going to see what you're doing here. Uh, oh, no. I need a, need a larva. Why don't I have a larva? Cannon rush from Brotoss. Didn't see this happening. Niviak, the Red Zerg player, getting his expansion. Cannon rushed pretty badly. Another cannon setting up, covering another expansion location. The drone retreating. Canceling, expanding up a little bit further away, but safe from cannons. At this point, Niviak saying, all right, so there's more cannons being invested here from Brotoss. I don't know, man. I guess he can cover two bases. He can cover three bases with this cannon rush, which, you know what? Probably worth it for the three cannons that he's got, at least for the time being. What are we doing? We're walling off here. Kanjiro with a barracks and a couple supply depots. I like the wall off choice here. Pretty fantastic stuff. Zeltron is getting himself in a macro hatchery. And this larva can become a roach. Okay, so Zeltron, Zeltron, Zeltron is going to be a roach player. Where's our Zerg player? Where's a larva? There it is. Going to be a Mutalisk player from Niviak. So it's roach versus Muta, red versus blue here. And on the Protoss side of things, looks like we have a lot of gateways. A lot of gateways. Oh, a Dark Templar from Sergeant, our red Protoss player. Kanjiro, on the other hand, is making some other stuff. He's got a Starport on the way, so probably something Starport-esque. Starport-esque Stormbringer, making a lot of barracks and ghosts. Oh, he's Ghost! Ooh, and he has a Ghost Academy and he's getting personal cloaking? All right, very excited about this one. We'll get some nukes on out. Stormbringer gonna bring the pain with the nukes. Sergeant has a pylon up in the blue team's side of things just to see if someone's gonna expand early. And Reverend is going to expand for our blue team. Let's see, Reverend can make Tempest. All right, so Team Blue has a Tempest player. Our other bro, our other Brotoss player here, getting a Cyber Core. He cannon rushed, so he's not really super high on the tech tree yet which is a problem, and it's going to be, what the what? Phoenix, why is that icon messed up? What is this? I don't know, it's it's Phoenix though. So Phoenix Tempest from Team Blue could be a pretty potent combination. Pretty potent indeed. So Phoenix, Tempest, Roach, and then our other Protoss players gotta do something. So nothing with the gateway, which is a problem. Nothing out of the gateway for Protoss. What else is he doing? He's expanded. He's not worried about teching at all, man. He just has his cannons up. He's cannoning in just random places, just hoping it works out. Kanjiro is our Viking player for Team Red. Pretty good stuff there. So it's going to be uh, Viking, Mutalisk, Ghost, and Dark Templar for Team Red. That's interesting. That's interesting. Phoenix flying around for Herp Derp, trying to kill Overlords and then just bypassing them entirely. Not going to worry about that. Going to try to fly here into Niviak's base. There's a Spire on the way for Niviak and a single Spore Crawler. I'm not sure if one Spore Crawler is enough to deal with four Phoenix. Uh, it probably is. It probably is. DT for Sergeant up, up here at Zelton's base, though. Going to town on those drones. Overlords are dying to these Phoenix. Ooh, supply blocked yet, Niviak? No, not supply blocked. Doing a pretty good job with it. DT just holding position 
and Zelton's main mineral line, our Blue Zerg player, in a lot of trouble right now. The drone's coming back in, but there's still a D here, DT here, man. This dude has nine kills, ten kills. The Dark Templar going to town. Going to town on this team. Uh, run, drone, Zelton, get out of there. There's Okay, there's an Overseer. That's nice, but something has to kill these dudes. There are some roaches on the way. That'll be extremely useful as well. Nu first nuclear missile on the way. For Team Red, Stormbringer bringing the storm and the nukes on Brotoss' cannons on his side of the map. So it's not a super exciting nuke, but we'll be satisfying to see it land anyway. There's our ghost friend using his laser sight. Oosh! Not taking out the can- two of the cannons are not dead, but Pylon is dead, so they're unpowered, and one of the cannons does get taken out as it's a direct hit here. Vikings flying around. For Kanjiro, they should be pretty good against our Phoenix player, I'd have to assume. Viking versus Phoenix straight up. I like the Viking for the range. Also, Viking versus Tempest, pretty fantastic as well. Team Red has some pretty good air advantage. Mutas are, ah, again, Mutas are good, except for the fact that the Phoenix are kind of OP against them. Just really favoring the Phoenix in that matchup, depending on the control of both players. If the Phoenix player has good control and the Muta player has good control, the Phoenix player is going to win. Phoenix flying into one of Niviac's bases. There are two Spore Crawlers here, though, and a Mutalisk, which does apparently want to die. But the Phoenix ignore him and just kind of hang out. Oh, there he is. Now he can die. All right. Mutas, why are you not caring about your lives? There we go. Fly back to the safety of the Spore Crawlers and hit hold position by all that is holy. Please hit hold position. Tempest player doing fairly well out of Reverend. Brotoss, what can you make here? Disruptor out of Brotoss. Okay, that's exciting. Herpter flying around. Killing probes, some Tempest Harass here on Sergeant's expansion as well. Pretty close to the middle of the map. This is a very dangerous place to expand from what I've seen on Shipwreck here. Roach is coming down, taking out a pylon from low to high ground. Team Blue doing pretty good with the aggression to this point. But again, the Vikings are kind of big, big deal. Really big deal against both those Tempest and those Phoenix. The Mutas, they can do well if the Phoenix are gone. But otherwise, I don't know. Team Blue working together. Working it together. Roach is coming in. Is there any speed for these Roaches yet? No. Not really. Is he working on speed? He's not working on speed. That's totally fine. All right, so Viking's going to defend against this Roach Phoenix attack. And here we go. Wow, look at them hit. Look at... Well, not... not. You have to actually let them hit before you turn away and start kiting. So, yeah, basically one-shotting Phoenix here. Triple-shotting Phoenix, depending on how things go. And there it is. Now the Tempest. There are not many Tempests. There are four Tempests against ten Vikings. Ooh, nuke on the way. Nuke on the way for Herp Derp along the left side. Uh, Stormbringer bringing it against Herp Derp. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Ugh. 18 kills on this ghost. Herp Derp losing so many units. How many do you have? 18 probes remaining for Herp Derp. Bad feelings. DT is running around for Sergeant, just trying to be as annoying as Dark Templarly possible. But, uh, no, not Vikings. Tempest here going to town after Sergeant's base. Again, they really want to kill this thing. It'll take them a while, but I think they'll get there. And yeah, Ghost just kind of dropping on Herkdurp's base, killing a pylon. Not depowering anything, as there are multiple pylons covering here. Disruptor going to try to do it. Disruptor Purification Nova. Look out. Ghosts run. Oh, one of them doesn't escape, but two of them get inside the medevac and manage to get the heck on out of there. Mutas for Niviac flying on in, taking one of Brotoss' expansions out. Only fair play considering he got cannon rushed by Brotoss earlier. Turnabout is always fair play, as they always say. I just don't know why the Vikings aren't taking down these Templar Tempests. There's nowhere for them to go. They can't hide at all. Here we go. Vikings flying on in, doing just massive damage against these Tempests. Yeah, a couple of Vikings are dying, but the Tempests are dying a little bit faster, I would say. There's only one left from that Tempest. Group pulling back to a defensive single cannon, which, again, not really enough to dissuade them from making this happen. Mutalisks versus Roaches, never a fair fight. Again, Roaches are pretty tanky against Mutas, but they can't fight back. Oh, the DTs come in, and it is a Roach Massacre. Ouch. Ouch, Zelton, having a hard time with these Roaches. Does he have speed on them yet? Were those fast Roaches? I couldn't quite tell. Didn't look like them. Oh, speed's just about done. Just about done for Zelton, but not quite there yet. Expanding up the right side is Sergeant from our red team. Protoss player doing a great job with the expansions. Another nuke on Herp Derp. Oh, <laughs> Stormbringer, you're so mean. Can he get it off? He can get it off. Can he see it? I think that's Phoenix saw it, but so they got out of the blast radius, but we're going to lose a cannon here. Oh, cannon toast, assimilator toast as well. It's just such a beautiful image. Such a beautiful visual image there. DTs from Sergeant coming in. Oh, taking out the cannons so the DTs are effective. All right. That's fun. Too many cannons, though, I think. Getting lifted by the Phoenix. 
are the DTs as they're being spotted here? We got Dark... Ooh, a Disruptor drop here on Niviac's main base. Nicely done by Brotoss. The Phoenix... Or the Mute is coming a little bit too late, but I think they'll find it. I think they'll find this Warp Prism. It doesn't have speed yet. Get out of there. Unload. No. <laughs> no unloading today. No unloading today. Uh, Team Blue, Zelton going after... Wait, attacking... Was he attacking his friend Stargate? I think he was trying to kill Dark Templar, but actually then accidentally hit... That Stargate instead of Herp Derps. Bad news. Tempest player just kind of hanging out from Reverend. Uh, I mean, they've killed the Nexus of Sergeant, but he's got two more that he's expanded up this top right. We also have pylons from Sergeant all the way across the top of the map, so they will know when Team Blue expands, which is just a great idea. Great idea for sure. Overseer, Rote Squad running around, plus one attack done on these roaches. Vikings again taking out Tempest. That's what they're built to do, man. Vikings were created to kill Tempest, even though Tempest didn't exist when the Viking was first introduced to the game. It's just it's what they're what they're there for is cap ships, battle cruisers, brood lords, carriers, Tempest, all sorts of wonderful things here. Trying to expand his Brotoss. The Mutas find this base immediately upon planting and kill it. No cancel available for Brotoss whatsoever. Roaches for Zelton moving on in, trying to kill Stormbringers Barracks that is basically been holding a line for most of the game now but now it is going to go down in flames and explosions roach is trying to come in here to niviac's base and take it down which they can do which they can do because the mutas are kind of elsewhere right now oh the mutas are going to find the disruptors though no 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 disruptors in so much trouble the phoenix coming in phoenix get out of my house get out of my house friends roach is going to town after niviac's base steady targeting being used by cloaked ghosts against roaches it's good it's just there are too many roaches to really Make it super cost efficient. DT is a little bit better against this. Mutas, again, a great choice against the Roaches. They're just kind of running around trying to kill what they can on the ground and not worrying about stuff in the air. What else do we have going on? Vikings flying around for Kanjiro trying to find stuff to kill. Come get involved, man. Come get involved. All the Roaches get taken out. Niviak does manage to save one of his bases, but the other one is pretty much in shambles. There are only... Well, I guess he transfer a bunch of drones over, but... Another nuclear missile on the way. Herp Derp seems to be the favorite target. From Stormbringer here, I feel bad for this guy, kind of. DTs warping in for Sergeant at Reverend's attempt at expanding at the very top side of the map. And... Did I... Oh, I missed the nuke. I missed it. Where was it? Where was Herp Derp? I was so busy elsewhere. I missed it. Ah, here it is. All right, so canceling. The Herp Derp sees this coming. And there we go. It lands, taking out a pile and doing a ton of damage to that Nexus. DTs are out. First Sergeant going after Reverend's attempt at expanding here, taking out a bunch of pylons. Mutas flying around, doing whatever they want. Tempest not great against Mutas or Vikings. As it turns out, I mean, these Tempest, it's a rough choice for Reverend. He's trying to harass with them, but they're just so low DPS for harassment. There was that, uh, what was it, disrupt ability they had back in the beta. Like, there was a, a proposed change in Legacy of the Void where they had a disrupt ability that did damage to buildings and stuff. And it was pretty good. It was like an area of effect attack, which would be pretty cool, but they didn't actually put it into the final game. So, bad news for that one. Ghosts taking out Phoenix like they're made out of tissue paper there. Wow, Ghost pretty good. Is that that extra damage? Whoa, extra damage versus medium is what they are. And Phoenix are medium. When? How did I miss that change? Phoenix are medium now? Mutalisk are medium as well. Did they? Ch I think they might have changed this in Mono Battle, but nowhere else. Tempted, nuke, fallen here. Where is it? Where is the nuke? Did it get canceled? It did get canceled. Nuke thrown down. Team Blue is just abandoning ship right now. Ha <laughs> ha. Abandoning ship on Shipwreck the map. That's hilarious. Yep, I mean, our red Vikings are killing everything. Nukes are fall. No, the nuke canceled to the last second by the Tempest. Tempest player Reverend making things happen. Going after these landed Vikings who are doing so much damage. So much damage. Yeah, these are heavy designation. What is this? One of these monobattle has weird armor classes. Vikings and Mutalists converging on the Tempest. The Tempests are trying to run. The Tempests are... Uh, they're gone. The Tempests are gone before I could finish that sentence. Roaches trying to defend here from Zelton, trying to kill Sergeant's expansion attempts all up along this right side. Vikings landing, murdering stuff, reminding me of One Trick Wednesday. Reverend's mad because he had bad teammates. Oh, Reverend. Reverend, sometimes it happens, man. Sometimes it happens. We got some good nukes off. Got some good nukes off in this game, which is what makes Mono Battle a lot of fun. You get to see some things you don't normally 
get to see another nuke on is this no it's reverence base this time from the ghost i was gonna say if it's herp derp you're just you have a, an agenda against this player and moment of silence please and there it goes so many cannons have been killed by the nukes in this game Muta is just destroying what's left of Zelton's base. Again, Mass Muta really good. Unless the other team has Liberators or Phoenix, it's just Mass Muta in mono battles pretty much fairly unstoppable. I would say Phoenix player not as good as he needed to be there. Roaches versus DTs here. Sergeant's base on the right side. Sergeant defending his own base. Thank you very much. With Dark Templar against Roach. Again, the Roaches aren't being microed very well. So the DTs are going to win this battle. But a lot of DTs did end up falling there. Roach are pretty good in that situation, even without the good micro. Mutalisks trying to kill overlords of Zeltons. How? Who is still in this game? <laughs> Reverend's still in this game. Reverend's still in this game. He has a base in the top side here. This is the one. It was Sergeant that actually knocked it down previously, but Reverend retook it. He's got two Tempests and a bunch of cannons, which is just. I don't think it's going to be enough. Another nuke coming in on Reverend's main base here. What's it going to kill is the problem. Nukes don't do enough damage to kill the Nexus or the Stargates. And possibly going to kill this pylon depending on the damage radius here. Let's take a look and see if it goes down or not. Yep, gets it. Okay, so does depower the robotics facility, depowers the fleet beacon. But I don't think the fleet beacon needs to be powered to allow Tempest to be built. And that is correct. That is correct. Team Blue Man holding out. Holding out right now, but I mean, I, the, the cannon ring is nice, Reverend. I appreciate your stubbornness here and your refusal to go home. Oh, Ghost stays a little bit too close to a cannon for that point and does get murdered by said cannon. One kill on that photon cannon. Vikings coming in against cannon. Viking versus mass cannon. Haven't said I've seen this before. Can't say that. And they're doing it again pretty darn well. Oh, photon cannons are heavy and fortified. Which means the Vikings don't... They do extra damage versus heavy. All right. All right. Either way, coming up into the air mode now. Taking down those Tempests. We got DTs against cannons, which doesn't seem to like make a lot of sense. But they're doing better than I would have expected. Dude, Muta player, come help. Dude, and that's it. Reverend's out. Stormbringer, Niviak, Kanjiro, and Sergeant are victorious from our team, Red. A really fun composition. Viking, Mutalisk, Ghost, and Dark Templar. With the Disruptor player, I really kind of feel bad that Brotoss went cannon rushy. If he'd kind of gone mass uh, mass uh, Disruptor, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of air on the other team. Maybe not as good. Maybe not as good as getting this composition as others. But regardless, yes, the Phoenix player wasn't too fantastic there. But Team Red kept the pressure up. Team Blue tried to get the pressure up, but with Tempest, it's just impossible. It's nigh impossible to pull off without some assistance from your teammates. So. All right, that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.